Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look today at a stunning Grunfeld game between Stockfish and Eagle Blade in the TCEC Season 25 Division P. Um, yeah, I mean, why did I like this game a lot? Um, well, first of all, I'm uh, a really a 1D4 player as white, so um, yeah, uh, certainly as a professional already, you know, in the uh, 1990s I was spending uh, a huge amount of my time trying to uh, to get to grips with the Grunfeld and trying to find uh, uh, positive plans against it, and I think that's uh, only got worse and worse in the uh, computer age. Um, Grunfeld holding up very well for black in many different lines, so um, it's nice to see one where it all goes a bit wrong. And I think um, uh, I think that the key point about this is that um, it does make you realise how you know fragile the Grunfeld is. I mean, you see all these games backed by computer analysis, and it all looks you know perfectly fine for black, but you just tweak something a little bit, um, like in this position where uh, yeah, Jeroen with the book managed to get uh, the engines to include H4 to H5 which, um, uh, well, weakens the Black King side, gives the white knight on g5 um, a great outpost. And all of a sudden, all of these positions turn out, you know, not just to be worse for black, but, um, I mean, it almost looks like a forced loss, uh, the way that uh, Stockfish played it. And, um, I mean, the, the results uh, from this position in my engine games were, were simply extraordinary. You know, so many white wins. So it's really, yeah, really, really interesting. I think this says something quite fundamental about these uh, Grunfeld positions. So let's have a look at how that all went. It's a really great game. So um, d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5. This is uh, Jeroen's book. Takes, takes, e4, takes, takes. And now, uh, yeah, black really should play uh, c5 straight away. But uh, Jeroen's book was to go castles, bishop e3, and then b6. And, uh, well, these, uh, these are th I think, are still known as the Simogin uh, systems, uh, named after, um, uh, yeah, very strong Russian player of 1950s, um, uh, 60s. Came up with a lot of interesting ideas. And he liked playing these sort of slow Grunfeld uh, lines, where you don't hurry with c5. You play bishop b7 first, maybe queen d6, knight d7, stuff like that, and then play either e5 or c5. Um, yeah, it worked quite well in the good old days, um, but in the modern computer age, it's a little bit risky because, uh, you know, pretty certainly that uh, something slow like that is going to be met by something violent like this. Um, and h4, h5, already uh, very, very dangerous. So um, Eagle played the move um, h5. Um, I think it's definitely the best move. Uh, it's the best chance of uh, stopping um, um, an attack against the king's side. I mean, you don't want to allow this h-pawn to come to h5. And if you go h6, well, we'll get hit with queen d2. So h5, definitely the best. But, uh, well, this gives a very nice um, square, um, either to the bishop on g5 or to the knight on g5. I mean, we saw uh, quite a few uh, games from, um, you know, Alpha Zero Stockfish 8, where um, yeah, Alpha Zero was playing h4 against these Grunfeld structures all the time. And, uh, yeah, Stockfish was reacting in various ways. But when um, uh, Stockfish 8 played uh, h5, then uh, Alpha Zero was tending to put a bishop on g5 and playing for g4 at some stage. You know, it was, uh, um, yeah, it was very, very impressive. But uh, bishop e2 c5 rook c1 so um very typical play from uh, from stockfish i mean basically you're getting the rook out of the line of the bishop and you're also protecting this pawn on c3 so now white's ready to play d5 and c4 and set up this big pawn center um bishop g4 played by um uh, eagle very normal move um get the bishop uh, outside i mean also the fact that uh, you've played h4, h4 and h5 you, it means you can't chase it away with h3 that's not particularly worrying for uh, for white in this position. Castles, e6, and now knight g5. So exploiting that um, um, that good outpost on g5 and getting off the uh, um, the uh, the light square bishops, and then black plays knight c6. And this was kind of where I really started uh, analysing with my engines because it looked like such a nice typical um, Grunfeld position. Yeah, I mean, what is the um, the essence of a Grunfeld position? Well, um, uh, white's got a, um, um, a double pawn center, d4 and e4, and black is attacking it with a lot of stuff, pieces and uh, pawns. 
And what's likely to happen is that you go c takes d4, and then black's going to have two queenside pawns against a, a single pawn. Um, yeah, long term in the ending, that could be um, um, uh, an advantage. Um, in the middle game, it tends to be hard for black to get those uh, queenside pawns moving. They're more, more often than not a target for white's pieces, white's rooks, rather than, um, uh, rather than a strength. But um, obviously in the ending, it can be. Um, the other thing that, um, that white has got, of course, is the possibility to play d5 and get a pass d pawn. Um, which can be very dangerous, but of course that d pawn can also uh, is also isolated, so could also be weak. And uh, as I pointed out earlier, one of the um, unusual features is that uh, White's managed to get a knight onto g5 uh, by putting in h4, h5. So that knight exerts annoying pressure against the um, um, the black king side, f7, e6. I mean, g4 is definitely always an idea. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, it makes hard black black can't really get rid of it with uh, with f6. And when you play d5, you know the knights combine against d6 as well. So that's very strong, uh, very strong piece here. One interesting thing to notice is that um, you know white does have the possibility of playing d takes c5, you know, and uh, winning a pawn. Yeah, in general, that's that's never really. Um, I mean, it is played, and sometimes it's the best white move, you know, but uh, it, it never really grabs you enormously. You know, I mean, um, white just ends up with pawns on a2 and c3 that are quite weak. Black has, uh, you know, is a pawn down, but it has some open files to attack. The diagonal of this bishop is opened. In general, you know, I, I've never really felt uh, comfortable doing it, even if, you know, it was the best way of, uh, of playing. Interesting little moment here, because uh, on my hardware, um, I was running mainly stockfish against Leela games, so yeah, I mean it's a decent, uh, it's a twenty core machine uh, for uh, for stockfish and uh, well, slightly weaker graphics card for uh, for Leela. Um, but uh, uh, both stockfish and Leela wanted to play the move rook f d one, which actually is quite logical there because uh, after c takes d four, c takes d four. Um, the rook is on the c-file. The only thing about it is that having a rook on the c-file also makes it easier for black to exchange off pieces, and exchanging off pieces is is kind of uh, kind of okay for um, for uh, for black. Um, the games were continuing, yeah, quite interesting fashion actually. Rook c4, queen e8, um, d5, knight e5, takes takes, d f e, and. Um, yeah, I was kind of assuming that this would be an absolutely massive advantage for white. I mean, weak pawns, e6, attacked by knight on g5, hard to get rid of. g6, also weak. Um, I mean, you play a move like f3 as white, you know, nice and solid, keep uh, this knight out of g4, and then just, yeah, try and uh, line up on uh, on the e6 pawn, invade on the c-file or something. You know, but uh, somehow the uh, the engines were, were kind of managing to, to hold this leela as well against uh, stockfish, which, you know, with a somewhat uh you know clear soft hardware disparity you know it's quite uh, quite decent but yeah i mean this was um uh, the way that they were playing it bishop takes g5 queen d4 queen d8 a little bit of pressure from black hitting there and uh, well it looks horrible to me i mean um you know weak pawn uh, weak dark squares uh, along the king but uh, stockfish was at 0 0.8 leela was at 0 0.6 so you know worse but not uh, disastrous and uh, they were managing to hold it, but I'd say it would, this would be really easy to get horribly wrong in uh, in a human game. Uh, simply, I mean, starting by the fact that it just looks disgusting to me. So uh, I'd already be thinking that I was much, 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 much worse there. Um, but I mean, rook f d one, very logical move. Rook c d one is um, is pretty aggressive. I mean, it, it's showing that uh, that White's um, still thinking about maybe. Uh, launching some sort of kingside attack here you know and um and doesn't want to have the rooks easily exchanged and is keeping a rook for the queen side as well um and here eagle played c takes d4 which you know sort of feels like um uh, the 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 normal move um i have to say that in my engine game stockfish did something absolutely amazing um played the move queen e8 uh, we've already seen this once uh, slightly yeah, unusual way of uh, stepping out of the pressure. The idea is that if you play queen e7, you get hit by d5 and d6 with tempo. So queen e8 is stepping out of the line of the rook and also, you know, not making sure that, you, you, you know, you still maintain, uh, um, you're not going to get hit by the um, uh, by the advance of the d-pawn in such a way. Um, d takes c5 was played by, um, uh, by Leela and... Uh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, as I've pointed out, eh, I'm not always very keen on uh, playing this move because of the weaknesses that it leaves. But the point in, in this position is that because of queen e8, we've got uh, dc5, bishop c5. So you can't actually take it. But that wasn't at all Stockfish's idea. Stockfish played knight e5, c takes b6, and now queen c6, b takes a7. That's a three-pawn sacrifice. That, 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 that's pushing it somehow. But um, the idea is knight g4. I mean, Black's idea is that um, you are going to probably exchange off this dark square bishop in some way. You're going to um, uh, get this a pawn. And then afterwards, well, you're two pawns down, but you have plenty of pressure uh, against the c and the a pawns. You know, just as normal, it's just that you're missing a b pawn as well. And well, somehow, actually, um, um, this did not work out badly at all for uh, for Black Stockfish. Held a, held a draw here with consummate ease. You know, the the other rook comes in here, and then at some stage we just start winning some pawns. Uh, rook b1, rook f8. Oh yeah, this was particularly nice because I was getting a little bit worried. I was thinking, well, you know, it's all very well. Um, I understand the, the the counterplay and the pressure, but uh, you know, with this knight on g5. Um, yeah, you, you'll 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 win a pawn back, but you'll exchange some pieces uh, afterwards, and then a, a rook gets to the seventh, and you're and you're sort of uh, in a lot of trouble. But yeah, what what Stockfish did was yeah. I mean, I, I might have thought of it, but I might have thought, ah, come on, this can't be true. But this is actually what uh, Stockfish went for: two pawns down in this uh, double rook ending, and um, but held a draw um, against Leela. So um, okay, Leela's not at, at at its very strongest, but. Still a very, very strong engine, especially in these types of positions. So pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure again whether this is uh, human repeatable, but I did think uh, this was a very nice, uh, yeah, you know, very nice idea. I vaguely thought about it. I suppose I could swap off my dark square bishop for uh, for that knight, but thought, nah, but surely I won't have enough compensation. But yeah, Stockfish, again, is saying it's something like 0 0.74 and 0 0.61 from Leela. So you know, slight to clear advantage, basically, you know, uh, but, um, you know, quite, quite far away from, um, what is it, the 75% winning threshold, you know, which is uh, 1.0. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff, I have to say. Eagle, uh, back in the real world, in the, uh, in the normal world of normal chess engines, Eagle played uh, C takes D4, C D4 and Queen D7, and uh, Stockfish just went for it straight away with D5 takes takes knight e7 d6 and knight f5 and yeah i mean these positions are are, are pretty interesting i mean you, you see them quite a lot in the in the grunfeld and you also see them quite a bit in the semi tarash as well um and um you know it, it's it's never quite clear really i mean this deep horn can be very very dangerous indeed but it can also just be you know a weakness as well um but um, what I was quite, you know, shocked about here was that, uh, you know, this move knight f5, well, it attacks the d6 pawn, but not really. I mean, you're not going to put yourself in a pin like that. But it's also attacking the h4 pawn. And the engines, uh, they just all say, ah, bishop f4, no worries. And um, so this past d pawn, it's not only, you know, um, uh, worth something in itself it's it's worth a whole pawn and after you're you're a whole pawn down the engines are still saying something like plus 1.5 for white it's just in an incredible positional judgment really you know the strength of this um of this pawn um means that it's not just worth uh you know uh some sort of advantage slight to clear advantage 0 0.6 0 0.7 it's worth so much that you can just be you know a, a pawn down and uh, and it doesn't matter and it's also you know a theme that i pointed out uh well in game changer actually as well of course silicon road as well that you know the engines often they 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 push um a, a pass rooks pawn and um, they achieve a goal in return. And here the goal has been a very strong one, you know, h5, which gives um, uh, white the g5 outpost, which white is using with uh, a lot of pleasure for uh, the knight on g5 at the moment. Later we'll also see the bishop coming here in a lot of lines. Um, but once that pawn has done that, the, the, the engines aren't, aren't, you know, they're just happy to give the pawn away. There was a great game in um, in Silicon Road where, you know, Leela plays h4, gets some sort of g6 weakening out of it, and then castles and then just uh, forgets the pawn, gives it away. Who cares? And here this is exactly the same. Stockfish is also just saying, take my rook's pawn. It's done its job. No worries about it. I'm just going ahead with uh, exploiting this d-pawn now. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, again, I find this, you know, remarkable and uh, not at all easy to grasp. 
So, um, yeah, you could take the pawn now um, or you can take it a move later. Um, that's what uh, Eagle does. So we'll just have a look at that one. I mean, the, the positions are very, very similar. I mean, basically, um, you know, um, already at this stage, you know, Stockfish is losing some games to Leela and winning a lot against Leela. And, uh, well, you know, on with the hardware disparity that I have, you know, that's quite impressive already. It just shows how powerful this position is. So Rook E8. Um, queen d3. Um, actually, Leela was a little bit incautious at times, playing the move queen c4. And that gave Stockfish um, this nice little opportunity to activate the rook. Um, yeah, pretty good, huh? Dong, dong, dong. And uh, Stockfish isn't finished yet, because after g3, the aim wasn't to take the pawn on a2. It's to go rook a4, and rook uh, takes f4. And, uh, well, in this way, uh, Stockfish, yeah, again, uh, you know, as always, out of nowhere, just managed to generate, you know, a reasonable amount of counterplay and disruption in the white position and um, managed to hold quite a few of these positions. It's not easy because, you know, this knight on g5 is exerting uh, unpleasant pressure and making this king a little bit um, weak. But still, you know, it's, um, uh, it's, you compare it to what happened in the game where black didn't manage at all to, um, to change the course of the position. And it's, uh, yeah, a pretty impressive defense. But yeah, queen d3 was what Stockfish did, just not giving black any of those tempi. Um, knight takes h4 and now queen d5. And this is, you know, again, this is also really impressive, right? Because, uh, you know, Stockfish, you know, is taking all the time in the world to, um, uh, to strengthen its position. And, um, you know, it's just spent two tempi with the queen just to centralize the queen. This is a very nice move. Um, first of all, it, it's pinning this pawn in f7. So um, the knight on g5 can't be chased away. Um, I mean, if you go king h8, then, well, you, you can do that. But that's going to mean that the, the f7 pawn will hang in quite a few, in quite a few positions. Uh, but secondly, it's keeping control over the white position and over black counterplay because the queen's also defending the king's side. So queen g4 was an idea after the knight went to, to queen h4. But now because you're covering everything, you can simply play the move uh, g3 here. And, uh, well, you're actually just threatening f3, just uh, chasing the queen away and then you'll take this knight on here. And uh, if you do something like f5, I think it was uh, f3 here trapping the queen. So... Um, you know, very nice move, this uh, this queen d5. Uh, but not obvious, you know, it's, it's these sort of Karpov creeping moves. You know, Karpov used to move the queen, typically one move forward. This is two moves, but still, you know, and uh, and gradually improve the position. And then you look at it and you don't know why, but it's just improved, you know. And, uh, well, Stockfish, very, very similar to this. Um, I mean, White's idea now is simply to play rook c1 and rook c7. So, um Eagle goes about trying to make this um, uh, slightly awkward. So um, um, if you go rook c1 now to go rook c7, it looks really powerful. Um, but black goes knight d4, and uh, actually you've got a double threat of knight e2 check. Well, you've got a single threat of knight e2 check, but you're forking two things, and you can't cover both. So actually black would just be better in that position. So uh, just shows there, typical Grunfeld, that there's uh, little counter chances all over the place, but Stockfish keeps beautiful control. Starting with a very unexpected move, for me anyway, knight e4. Just seems, uh, you know, that knight's so beautiful on e4. Why would you move it on, on g5 rather? Why would you move it to e4? But, um, well, it's um, uh, uh, actually it's doing two things. White's getting the possibility of going bishop g5 and coming into f6. But also white's using that knight as a sort of a barrier to the, to the rook. So um, um, when you go rook c1, you go knight d4 now. The rook's not attacking e2, so we can go rook e1 to cover it. It's quite pretty unusual, this. Uh, really unusual. And, uh, well, you're going to see the next moves. It seems that like white goes, uh, sort of goes, goes around in a circle, but somehow black's pieces get worsened. And again, this is very Karpovian as well. That's what Anatoly always used to do. Um, you had uh, four or five moves that you didn't really understand where he just seemed to uh, end up with the same position, but somehow Black's position had got worse. Um, so rook e6 was played by, um, by Eagle. So um, a little repetition of moves. And now rook c1. Um, and Black plays uh, knight d4, but now, as I mentioned, we go rook e1. And um, yeah, I mean, we're covering that e2 square, and we're now threatening um, rook c7, uh, when the Black Queen is somewhat embarrassed, and then this pawn will move. And then um, rook, uh, so after rook e1, rook e8 was played. 
Um, and uh, the idea is that if you go rook c7 now, I go queen e6, and suddenly we're back to 0.00, .00 again. Now, the big problem for white is that it takes, allows knight e6, forking these two. Very irritating. So, um, um, what uh, do we do here? Yeah, I mean, queen g5 is necessary, but after knight f5, this queen's got kind of uh, locked out somehow. You know, the white piece has lost all harmony. The the the, rook, the knight is pinned to the rook as well. It's all gone all gone a bit nasty. Um, but Stockfish plays the move rook c d one again. Incredibly fine move this one. Just uh, um, you know, just you got to the open file. You had <coughs> the clear goal, which is the, obviously your long term goal to go rook c seven. But no, you you turn away from that to chase away the uh, the black knight. And um, yeah, where does this uh, black knight uh, go? Um, it went back to uh, c6. If you go to, uh, back to e6, then I'll, I might play the move bishop e5 and then bishop b2. Just, uh, yeah, we don't really need the bishop defending this pawn. It's aiming towards the, um, uh, the black king and we're just gonna go for rook c1 again and uh, try and invade. So um, knight c6 was played by eagle. And now the move bishop g3. Um, again, an incredibly calm move here. But um, um, I mean, you know, Stockfish is more or less saying to Eagle, well, what can you do? Anything you do, you know, worsens your position. You're virtually in Zugzwang. And, you know, Stockfish has got a couple of moves that it would really want to play as well. Um, f3, for example, to support the, the, the knight on e4. Even a4, just to, um, to maybe have a chance of going a5 or to give you the possibility of going queen b5, you know, putting the queen on a protected square. So there's quite a few moves that uh, Stockfish can do just in general to improve the position. But this bishop g3 move is very nice. It's getting out of the way of, you know, of any random uh, attacks, really, and also getting out of the way of any possible forks in the end. Um, so, yeah, just a very calm, quiet, consolidating move. Now, um, um, Eagle played the move rook e6 um, as a sort of a waiting move. Yeah, um, knight d8 was what um, uh, Stockfish was uh, was playing. And now uh, this move a4. Um, obviously, if you take, I can play a move like d7 and uh, follow up, which is very, very powerful. We've got bishop d6 to win the rook. Also, you know, uh, other sort of stuff like... Uh, um, uh, I was going to say rook a1, but <laughs> this one's uh, um, uh, rather... Uh, uh, rather annoying that just d7 and uh, and uh, pile through uh, on the d file there so um yeah i mean th these were stockfish games against uh, lilo with black just uh, hanging on like this but you know uh, just f3 and another good move and now a5 and uh, you know the pressure's just growing and um, well neither stockfish nor lila managed to find anything remotely interesting to do and at some stage you know rook c1 is just going to come in there so, um, um, yeah, bishop h8 was played uh, in these games. Rook d2, rook b1, just uh, aiming for this pawn. You know, if you take, then I'll invade on b7 rather than, um, rather than on, uh, on, uh, on c7. You know, just so many possibilities for white to improve the position. What I really liked was, you know, rook e6 was played, and now Stockfish goes back to, uh, to c1. Um, f3 is also a very reasonable move, but just rook c1 here. And of course, you know, you don't have any queen e6 ideas in the future anymore. Um, you've, with the knight on e4, you're, you're covering this e file, so you can actually just uh, hit the knight and uh, get ready to come into c7 straight away. I mean, it just struck me, you know, in this position that um, uh, there just seemed to be no way for black to put, to put up any sort of barrier anywhere. You know, and it's not just uh, Eagle, you know, suffering against uh, Stockfish. Um, yeah, you know, Stockfish as black was not finding any decent way of putting up some, you know, a barrier to stop the white pieces from invading. You know, of course, Stockfish is making some draws from time to time because it's just, uh, you know, a ridiculously good defender and um, Leela went wrong from time to time. But uh, but still, you know, Stockfish was losing a, a very large number of games like this. You know, Leela playing some very nice stuff. So, yeah. Incredible. Um, I'm really, you know, I'm really quite, quite puzzled about this uh, and, and just about how bad it can be. But yeah, maybe it's just, just a, a reflection of how fragile these Grunfeld positions are. You know, you add um, uh, a slight uh, weakness like that and suddenly, you know, this past deep pawn is, uh, is gaining in strength enormously. Now, very instructive. So knight e7, queen d3, knight c6, eagle just, uh, yeah, using a few tactics, but queen c4 now and, uh, well attacking that knight on there and knight b8 was eagle's uh, move 
I mean, if you go uh, knight d4, which was my move, then just queen d5 here. And if rook e8, yeah, we're not going uh, rook c7, queen e6. We're playing rook c4 now. And uh, after knight e6, ah, uh, you notice why we played bishop g3. You're not attacking my uh, my bishop anymore. So I can do some uh, stuff. Uh, rook d1 was uh, was one uh, game. f4, looking for, uh, for f5 there. And uh, bishop h4 was another idea. Yeah, maybe at some stage looking for bishop e7 also, of course, looking for knight f6. Just incredibly strong, really. So um, knight b8 was played by eagle. That's not going to win a um, uh, likely saving move of the, of the year, I fear. Um, rook e d1. Bishop h6. Just uh, rook c2. Queen d8 and queen d5. Have you seen, uh, yeah, how the queen's moved here? It's gone, um, you know, e2, d3. You know, d5, um, then c4, d3, d5. I mean, really, it's really, you know, it really is Karpov, uh, this. But again, centralizing the queen, hitting the rook, aiming towards the king, and, uh, um, yeah, just uh, controlling c6. So the, um, uh, the um, it doesn't even matter if, uh, if black plays the queen to d7. The, uh, you can't support knight c6, and we've just got rook c7. So knight d7 played. Eagle tries an alternative uh, route for the knight, blockading the, the d-pawn now. But rook c7, and uh, well, it's pretty clear we're, we're coming in quite nicely. h4, and now bishop h2. Actually, that sort of move always makes me a little bit nervous uh, as white, because, uh, you know, bishop on h2, king on g1, back rank uh, mate threat. But, um, yeah, you know, Stockfish is thinking I'm going to play f3 very soon, and that'll remove all those threats. Um, so... Um, um, a6 played by uh, by Eagle, yeah, running a bit short of moves. I mean, if you, but if you do something like Knight f6, I just take and go d7, and then I've got yeah, Rook c8. I've got Bishop d6. I've just got it all really. So um, um, yeah, actually, uh, if Rook e2, that was one of my moves I suggested. You just play King h1, getting out of the way. Um, your queen's protecting uh, uh, g2, and uh, if anything happens on the back rank, we can always go Bishop g1. And after h3, then this move, bishop g3, is played, which is a very nice way. Covering f2 now. <coughs> hg king takes, and uh, we're still threatening d8. And also rook c8 as well. So, um, a6 played by eagle. Um, f3, and then b5. Um, looks a little bit hopeless, this, but actually you're, you're giving your queen potentially some uh, escape square there. So that's, uh, I think, why it was uh, played there. Queen b3, um, not a move I was expecting. Uh, Leela's queen b7 uh, was um, uh, much more what uh, I was thinking of, really. And then d7, that looks pretty natural to me. Um, but, um, yeah, queen b3, played by uh, Stockfish. Just keeping control, stopping the, uh, the dark squared bishop from, uh, from uh, coming into e3. Queen to e8, and now a very subtle move, king f1. Um, well, you'll realise why uh, king f1 had to be played on the on the next move because uh, Stockfish has got a very specific plan here so Queen d8 played Eagle just uh, waiting and now Rook takes d7 was Stockfish's idea and Queen d7 Knight c5 what's the point of King f1 well if I played uh, um, Rook takes d7 in this position and then played Knight c5 you would have pinned me with Queen a7 um, and then you would have had Bishop e3 check as well coming in if ever ever I found anything to do so um, uh, the move king f1 was subtle, just uh, st you know, just doing this one. And what are we doing? Well, actually, we're removing the barrier here. We're removing black's most active piece. Um, and we're also uh, shaking up black's king side as well. So um, queen c6 was played by uh, eagle. Takes, takes, queen e6. Um, yeah, you can go king h7, but I'll just go queen e7 and d7. That's going to be pretty good. Uh, d8 queen uh, coming in. So um, um, rook f7 was played by eagle, queen g6, bishop g7. And, uh, you know, it is quite shocking. I mean, um, uh, all this work, all this brilliant play that I've been enthusing over, and why it's only a pawn up, but uh, it's a pretty big pawn there. Um, very nice move now from, uh, from Stockfish um, because, uh, yeah, you know, um, it's clear that you're, you know, that you're doing very well and uh, it's clear that you, should, you can start organising some stuff, maybe to push the d-pawn or whatever. But um, a very, very nice move first uh, because there's only there's one piece that's a little bit vulnerable and it's that king on f1. 
So Stockfish just plays King G1 just to uh, to get out of the way. Just preparing King H1, and then we're going to come in with stuff like Rook E1 or whatever. Um, so H3 played by uh, Eagle, um, and now Queen E4 from uh, Stockfish. Very nice uh, switch there. You know, just moving from um, from thinking about a kingside attack to an end game here. So takes takes. Um, we're threatening d7 here, so rook d7 has to be played to block it, and now g takes h3, and uh, well, the net result of this is that we're two pawns up with white, with uh, two connected past pawns. Black does have some possibilities to um, to blockade a little bit, but yeah, not uh, not great ones really. I mean, we've also got some quite split past pawns, so these will be quite difficult to, uh, to deal with. Rook d5, by the way, is a very nice move. Um, the point is that it's restricting the advance of the queenside pawns. I would definitely say remember this theme in your games because um, I, yeah, I've noticed I could have played it a, a couple of times, I'm sure, um, thinking about it, you know. Um, the point is a5 allows rook b5, and after b4, you can't play a5 because the rook's covering a5. It's a very powerful way of stopping two pawns at a place like this um, that in principle are able to, connect, to create um, a pass pawn on the queen side uh, to stop them from advancing. And of course, you know, if black needs to start using the rook to uh, uh, push the pawns, well, that leaves the d, form, d, d pawn uh, free to advance. So very, very, very important uh, um, setup there. Mark Jaretsky always used to like those. You know, he always picked the... Yeah, I think that's where I get that... Uh, um, uh, get that feeling from you know somehow uh, he always used to like little things like that always used to point them out and um, you know have them filed away well in his brain or in, in his little card system you know typical very typical little um, mannerisms somehow that uh, can save you a lot of work so um, king g2 b4 h4 as you can see the a pawn can't advance so rook a7 played uh, now rook c5 so we're, we're looking uh, to play something like rook c7 Bishop f6, bishop g3, um, rook a8, h5, a5. And now uh, another good mannerism, probably better better known than, uh, than rook d5. Rook b5, that's how you stop two pawns like this from advancing. You put uh, them uh, just uh, attacking the back one and uh, covering the, the front one. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, this is really, uh, I do have to say, you know, this is a, a real example of absolutely perfect technique. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the best technical players do. This is the sort of stuff that Magnus does and that uh, Karpov did and all of that. But it just saves you so much effort, you know, <laughs> so much effort to, uh, uh, in conversion, you know. Instead of having to, um, to calculate stuff, pushing your own pawns and all of that, you're just restraining it with very simple means. So um, rook g8, king f3, bishop d8 by uh, eagle, but this is not going to uh, um, do very much. I think a, a human player would have gone a, a little bit bananas and tried to create some sort of counterplay. This pin is not what the doctor's looking for. This h pawn is very, very dangerous. Rook b7, rook a7, bishop h4, rook a5, and uh, well, the game soon, uh, soon ended. Um, too many pass pawns um, and uh, stockfish won in 75 moves. I mean, that was really gorgeous. I thought that was really, really good. And uh, yeah, I mean, I learned an awful lot of stuff. I mean, first of all, uh, this endgame technique thing, um, I did in principle know this, but yeah, it was great to see it, uh, you know, demonstrated again uh, by Stockfish. And uh, yeah, I mean, those little things, it's those little things that makes, uh, you know, the difference between a you know, world-class conversion of, uh, of, um, of, of uh, advantages, uh, you know, material advantages in endgames and um yeah very difficult and even losing them uh, sometimes you know um and uh, yeah i mean if you can master those then uh, you, you know your conversion technique in blitz as well you know uh, or rapid just increases uh, enormously you, you shouldn't really have to think about those things it should just be a natural shape of the pieces for you but i mean uh, yeah i mean the, the thing that really amazed me you know was um was just um the you know the fact that in this position this past d pawn is so strong that you can just give away a pawn uh, just like that and um and uh, the advantage is still something like one one plus one point seven but um yeah i mean there were some very nice uh some very nice things and um yeah i mean you know ov obviously there's a lot of calculation going in there that you wouldn't necessarily be able to repeat but some of the uh, the basic um uh, setups you know are definitely uh, worth um, worth remembering and definitely human reproducible centralizing the queen continually like this behind that past d pawn is really nice um and um uh yeah 
you know, I think, you know, swapping around, I mean, I've often uh, mentioned this and uh, mentioned it in Game Changer, also in Silicon Road and also re-engineering as well, that, you know, one of the ways in which the engines improve their position is that, you know, they get these great outposts like G5 and then they just seem to swap their pieces around on them. So, so one time the knight's coming in there, another time the bishop is coming into uh, to G5 and then you'll swap around and somehow you've disrupted the opponent's position. Um, you know, pretty impressive. This, however, was uh, these moves, rook c1, rook e1, and then rook back to d1. You know, everything about restricting the opponent's position, you know, not rushing to, uh, to, to get the move that you want to play, even moving, a, you know, putting that goal of getting rook c7 further away in order just to restrict the opponent's pieces. It's incredible. And, and moves like this, you know, bishop g3, so nice, really. You know, it, you know but again, these are human playable. And uh, certainly, I, I mean, uh, you know, and uh, not just, uh, the, you know, the absolute elite players. The sort of moves I play when I'm in good form. You know, just uh, paying attention to everything, understanding, you know, what the balance of power is. I don't need to, to rush. I don't need to do anything. And then just finding good, strengthening moves, you know. And, uh, well, I mean, you see it... Um, you know, again, um, in um, uh, in this uh, position here, rook c7, um, b5, you know, this move, queen b3, quite unusual, but stopping the bishop from getting active, and then king f1, you know, just uh, making sure that there are no tactics before uh, you go for any sort of uh, tactics yourself. And then, you know, this gorgeous move, king g1, you know, the king's done its job, got you this far now put the king back into safety and then afterwards we're going to look further i mean it's just uh, oh, exquisite technique all the way but again you know this is one of those things where you say um you know in terms of what i could pick up from this game as a human player it's actually enormous um you know that the the idea that the d pawn gains in, enormously in strength if you've got h4 h5 in um you know the um the idea of centralizing the white queen behind the d pawn um, the um, uh, these um, uh, consolidating moves, Bishop G3, you know, Queen B3, King F1, all prophylaxis. You know, n not uh, certainly not uh, impossible to uh, to understand for uh, humans. And then, uh, yeah, you know, these um, these lovely little moves, um, uh, Rook D5, uh, and then uh, Rook B5. Again, you know, there's a lot that you could take away from this game. That's what I, you know, obviously the spectacular tactical games are, are gorgeous as well, and I love seeing them, and I love you know trying to uh, to get at least some of those ideas into my head as you know typical tactics but these are really games where you could learn so much from the uh, from the engine you know in principle you know this is where you could you could gain the you know the 200 points that i think humans have still got in them you know to uh, uh, to improve so um yeah so really great stuff and another gorgeous game from stockfish i mean stockfish really on fire in uh, the tcc playing some uh, absolutely wonderful games leela too but stockfish just somehow uh, absolutely relentless uh, on that uh, on that score so there we are a little bit of a longer video but i hope you you feel it was worth it i think it's actually you know really really important uh, bit of grunfeld understanding there and uh, and a great game as well so uh, so there we are if you like the video give a like subscribe to the channel tell your friends about this channel try and get those subscribers up uh, and take a look if you haven't seen them already my new books Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, Reengineering the Chess Classics. Um, yeah, full of stuff like this, actually, where, uh, you know, reengineering the chess classics, it's looking at classic games, but with the help of the engines and, uh, you know, running, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of engine games, normally about, probably about 400, 500 uh, per, per classic game. And, uh, you know, discovering stuff with the first hundred and then afterwards, uh, you know, just uh, iterating again and again until uh, until everything becomes clear. And, uh, yeah, you know, and then explaining them also in a human way, as I tried to do in these videos. You know, I think it uh, it's a very unusual book. Never been anything uh, like it. Um, so, yeah, do uh, do take a look at that one. Um, but otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and uh, stay tuned. Got lots more videos from here and from the CC CC. Um, with Leela, with Stockfish, with Torch and a few great games from the other engines as well. Thanks for watching.